Southeast Asia. And Hellier, uh, really cool to kind of see his debut in particular. He's an incredibly popular player on the roster mm -hmm. and also known as the captain in his uh, domestic region. Indeed, indeed, the man on your screen. And uh, you were talking about you wanted that Super Galaxy Rumble last game. Well, we may get it this time because he is, of course, an excellent Rumble player. So he has a really cool story. Uh, he is known, like I said, again, North American fans, you know, the general and will now meet the captain. And he he was on Furious Gaming and he's now starting a new team and it's Legacy in Latin. I would try to pronounce it, but I'd butcher it. I really don't want that that hate right now. Uh, <laughs> so what's cool, That's though, fine. is that he reached out to the jungler on this all star uh, roster, Kletos, and he said, come out of retirement, come play on this new team Legacy with me. Let's qualify through the challenger uh, bracket and back into the Latin American South League to perform. And it's really cool for fans because Kletos Kletos is considered the best jungler in the region, full stop. And fans have really wanted to see Kletos and Hellier kind of team up and use their uh, their precision and their excellence across the region. So this will be kind of like a, a precursor to that possible team down the future. I mean, the big thing for him right now is really giving back to his fans as well for like voting for him. And it's just really cool to have that story. Like the story is the same for a bunch of guys on his team, but he really just wants to like, you know, reach out. But um, moving on to the opposite team as well, I kind of want, like, want to just kind of look at the mismatches uh, in this matchup and how uh, some players are obviously stronger than others and like Plugo in the mid lane of course, like whether he'll be able to actually stack up and Kletos will be able to work with him because he is used to a mid laner who uh, typically plays those assassins. Yeah, so uh, when I was having the Latin American South team, you know, kind of deep diving on them, it was explained to me that uh, Clutos effectively got to play with the Faker of Latin America South. Yeah. Like that, that's the bar that we're going to use for the Faker. It's an the adjective faker now. Of. Just amazing adjective Faker. Uh, and that player had a very uh, aggressive play style. So Clutos is a very vision, control-oriented jungler, you know, not really known for his dueling potential, and he plays with a very aggressive jungler. Plugo is completely the opposite. He's a very calm, very patient, very collected player. Uh, his actual favorite player and a guy that he really looks up to is actually Kami from the Brazilian squad. So it's very okay. cool for him. He's very excited to be in this tournament because the thing is, is the Latin America South guys, they play and they scrim with Brazil all the time. So, you know, they've, they've seen the talkers. They're not phased by this. But in particular, Plugo has never played against Kami on an international stage, and he finally gets the opportunity to play against one of his heroes. Well, we'll get to more of that later, but first up, let's introduce the representatives from Latin America South coming in here. The top laner will be Helior from Furious Gaming, the jungler Kletos from Isaurus Gaming, mid laner will be Plugo from Chaos Latin Gaming's movie star, while ADC uh, <laughs> Warangulus. Oh man, I knew I was going to butcher Wait, this from Halfnet Esports. Go ahead. Exactly, and then his support bear from Chaos Latin Gamers. Now I checked with them, he's called Wara. We Wara. can call him Wara, Thank that's God. what he's known as. All right, so perfect. Makes I didn't want to say Wara on, on air, but <laughs> <laughs> for us, take, take this next one. Don't butcher okay. like I did. And representing Southeast Asia, the Vietnam All Stars, it's QTV in the top lane from the Boba Marines, formerly the Saigon Jokers. Jungle, it's Levy from Sky Red. Mid is Optimus, known as OP Optimus, in his region from also the Boba Marines, formerly of Saigon Jokers. And then AD Carry and Support is going to be Celebrity and Ron OP, also from the Saigon Jokers. And also OP. There's a lot of OP on this lineup and we'll see if they can actually like turn up and live to their namesakes because OP Timus is known to be like the playmaker and the, the star of his team. Yes, he is considered to be the best player in Vietnam and that's funny because I come from the LPL region and we actually have a, uh, a Vietnam player tearing it up there and it's SOFM and he was a, a big deal in this region and so it was yeah. a lot of regional pride to see him move into one of the power regions and even SOFM has said O or I don't want to say OP Thomas. Optimus is the real deal. This guy is a very mechanically oriented mid laner, and he's a huge threat on this roster. That's a pretty good accolade to have under your belt, and I know it's also like affected how like the jungle pathing works as well for them. And they really look up to SOFM as like uh, a really pinnacle of just like what they can do as like a region. Yeah. So I was spying into Southeast Asia because again, how they qualified into this tournament was really interesting. They went to their own kind of mini all stars. So this roster does have experience uh, playing together because they had to face across from you know, Thailand, Singapore, sure. uh, Malaysia, things like that to qualify. And the first game I spied was watching Levy. And the first thing he did is he did SOFM's double uh, cru or excuse me, double scuttle mm -hmm. jungle pathing. Of course, this was 6.21, so we'll keep our eye on that. But you can definitely see the, the fingerprints left over from SOFM. Absolutely an influence there. But as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, we are into Champion Select here with the fans coming through. Oriana aimed at Optimus in the mid lane. Trundle taken away as well from SEA. 
and uh, LeBlanc will be banned along with Syndra. So mid lane priority actually over to Pluga. Yeah, already seeing a lot of the respect as well, that Orianna ban away from uh, Optimus, but there we go. Wanted to see at least one of those junglers at the board. Yeah, that still leaves up uh, pretty strong junglers such as Lee Sin, Rek'Sai, and Ivan taken away there with Rise. Where's the priority? It's on Poppy. Wow, Tom Kinch, after the performance that we just saw from last game, I know the players are watching it backstage to automatically go with the priority pick of Poppy. Now this says one of two things. Either Hellier is known for his Poppy. Uh, he is a big facilitator and playmaker, so it is an important champion for unlocking his potential, but it either hides your hand or you just have that much faith in the captain that he will lead you to victory with a very kind of absorbing, I don't want to call her passive champion, but yeah. you know, she's not like the big playmaker like you ex would expect from someone like a Tom Kench or a Fiora or an Aurelia. Right, I mean, there's opportunities to go in and lane and kind of make some plays, but it's not just like, I'm going to open up an opportunity for myself. There's going to be windows and maybe I can get through them. I feel like it's more Hellier standing up and being like, Poppy's a good pick in the meta right now. I feel really comfortable on the pick. I'm going to take, you know, the, the brunt and I'm going to show my hand to maybe open up a counter pick later on down draft phase for the rest of my team. Again, this is something that he's really known for. He's known for being professional, for being very calm, and for kind of being the natural born leader in his region. And we do have some lock-ins from the SEA side. Will be that Victor going into the mid lane once again. And Levy will be picking up the Lee Sin into the jungle. See what he can do with that pick. We saw what Carbon attempted to do last game. It fits uh, in his wheelhouse perfectly. It does. Uh, again, the thing with Levy is that he doesn't prioritize. So these two junglers are two extremes. You have Kletos on one side, who is very control, vision-oriented jungler. And then you have Levy on the other side, who is all about just killing people. He doesn't buy pink wards until after 10 minutes. It's actually very rare for him to pick up any vision at all. Good to know. Well, Kletos has picked up the Rek'Sai for himself there. So you can see the top tier junglers already rising and bubbling to the top at the start of this tournament. And Karma will also be locked in alongside her, flexing, of course, mid lane, bot lane. We were talking about it uh, a bit backstage, Pulse, and I'm actually really keen on Rek'Sai right now. Just because, again, the changes in the jungle timers from 100 to 150 uh, opens up so many more windows to... It, it decreases your ability to power farm just because there's less camps on the map. Uh, and then it opens up your opportunity to gank. And the thing about Rek'Sai is she's kind of like in the, the Venn diagram of all of these good things. You know, she's tanky, she can threaten a backline, she can farm very quickly, and she has very unique gank paths and a lot of kill pressure on a lot of matchups. Mm -hmm. And she can use a certain new mastery, which happens to be very good right now. Tanky. So <laughs> there you go, right in the center of the Venn diagram. And next two lock-ins, hello Maokai, welcome back. Coming into the meta, going into top lane. He may be skirting outside the Venn diagram, but we'll see. And Ezreal also locked in for Celebrity. Are we really surprised to see Maokai return? Not really, he does that. <laughs> he comes back and he has reliable lockdown and he can use a mastery. And it's again also the fact that Poppy was revealed in the first hand, so yeah. Maokai going to that matchup know that knowing that he's not going to be punished. The thing that really kind of pushed Maokai out of the meta, uh, obviously the tank's falling off, but the fact that picking him blind, he could be punished. Yeah, by many, many different picks. Going back over to LAS for their final lock-ins will be Vayne and will be Janna. So going back over to those hyper carries, the classic lane as well there. No, this is perfect because I wanted to talk about Wara. Uh, so Wara was a roll swap from the mid lane into the AD carry. And he surprised everyone by ending up being the best AD carry in his region. He's known for his Vayne, he's known for his hyper carries. And it was told to me that Latin America South would probably uh, build compositions around him. And already we see that. We see the Karma, we see the Janna, we see the Poppy. This is all about Wara, and this is his ability to shine. He's here technically by proxy. He's the third voted player into the position. You know, people either either refusing their vote or had too many representatives of the team. Yeah. So this is kind of his moment to say, I'm honored that you picked me, that I'm allowed to go, and now I'm going to show that I'm worth it. I'm going to turn up and show that uh, you were right to let me into this lineup, and that's what he's looking to do. And Vayne is definitely a champion you can do that on. You can go big, and he's or got you can all go the tools. home. Uh, the fact that uh, Vayne is becoming a higher priority does mean that John is a higher priority because of how well they work together with uh, with the shield as well as Vayne's itemization. We'll get back into that more in the game as we see it progress. Yes, we will. Final lock in. Nami going into the bottom lane there for Ron OP for uh, uh, his ADC of Celebrity. So going to be gearing up in that bottom lane to try and take down the super farming vein. Yeah, so on one side, you've got the uh, the hyper carry and Wara, and on the other side, you have Celebrity. Now, Celebrity has the... Uh, 
the persona of being a little bit crazy. Uh, <laughs> it, it's very hot and cold, very polarizing. Either this guy goes completely off, he doesn't care what's in meta. During the All-Star tournament, he was playing things like Draven, uh, the Draven Thresh lane running around. He is comfortable with one OP. It's one of the reasons why that support uh, did make it this far, you know, ended up on this roster. So there is experience there, but otherwise it's kind of a, a bag of what, what version of celebrity are you going to get? All right, Frosk, so golden question. We have the full lineups now. Where are you putting your money? I'm going to have to go with uh, Southeast Asia. Okay. I really do like Latin America South's composition. I like that it has a strong identity that goes with their strengths. I like that, you know, I like when I can kind of predict what a team's going to do, but uh, Southeast Asia, you know, they were, they've been together longer. They've got mm -hmm. more synergy. They already went through a tournament, so they, they should have the upper hand here. On the other side, I just want to see Vayne go big, really. <laughs> I just want to make that happen. And Karma and Jana are there to facilitate. Rek'Sai to pressure the back line. It's really all down there to make it happen. But once again, Jump on Twitter, vote at LOL Esports using those hashtags, hashtag LASWIN or hashtag SEAWIN. We'll be tallying up the votes and getting to that one in game as we get into this one once again for our second match of the day, the fourth 5v5 that we have. And up next, we'll have some 1v1s for you. So look forward to that. I certainly am. But we'll be getting into this, see which team and which. Uh, Collection of teams, I should say. Fire and Ice will reign supreme and pick up another point for their side. But we are now onto the rift. The teams have loaded in. Ice ready to go, and as is Fire heating up the battlefield. <laughs> Players to watch is going to be Kleidos and Levy again. I said this is kind of the uh, the control jungler versus the hyper carry jungler. Very polarizing identities for both these players, and their champions certainly fit that wheelhouse. Levy on the Lee Sin, Kleidos on the Rek'Sai. Just checking some brushes here. Make sure there's no Kalatos in there. Mid lane, bit of harass, but of course he'll have plenty of time to go back to base and regenerate some health. This time he finds the Rek'Sai. Oh, Wara taking a lot of damage there from Celebrity and Ron OP. And he'll waddle back to that tower, adding insult to injury. But uh, he's good. This is actually really unfortunate. So. The reason why is that he has to back and he's going to lose a lot of positioning for a possible level one. This could be punished by Celebrity and Ron OP, especially if they take control of the brush. Although, as I say, this Ezreal is actually backing up to protect his jungler, although you still see Nami scouting down. So it's not going to be punished by Celebrity and Ron. But if they had you know, chosen not to maybe leash for Lee Sin, because he doesn't necessarily need it to stay healthy in the jungle and just tried to camp that brush. They could have gotten full control of the incoming creep wave and Vayne and Janna would have been left to their own devices until the creep wave eventually bounced into their tower. And in the top lane, we just had a small trade between Helio and QTV and gave a slight advantage to Poppy, which is always nice to have because, of course, we'll be able to super brush out the Maokai, but anything she can get just to keep him down, just so he can't just get perfect farm and just arrive to team fights and sit on Vayne's face and force it to do nothing. Okay, so we already have a bit of a difference between the jungle starts. Uh, Levy, you know, most junglers have actually been starting their camps. Again, the smite bonuses were taken off, so it just makes sense. Uh, Levy actually went wolf camp into Gromp, and we'll keep our eyes on where he goes next. Looks like it's gonna be the blue buff. Yeah, Kletos, meanwhile, went for the red and Kuros, which should give him level three. Looking for the cheeky level all three of these, gank. Yeah, and he's, of course, centered around the bot side, around this vein, so, I mean, it makes sense but Celebrity and Ron OP must know that something is around the corner. Exactly, we already saw Revolta pull this maneuver early on. This is the other cool thing. The uh, jungle changes have also changed when the bottom lane's ward, although hold on. Ooh, bit of a trade in the bot lane. Celebrity able to put a lot of punishment onto Wara. Kletos, it's the fight over the crab. He doesn't get that one, but he will put the damage oh. onto Levy. He's going to jump away to Palugo, who hurts in return. Levy's low, but he will be first blood for Kalatos. Another jump onto Optimus. He's going to pressure him out of lane. Got that level three. Look at the damage in from Rek'Sai. Rock in a hard place. Palugo had control of the uh, early push. Victor doesn't get the ability to push out minions as consistently this low level. Oh, no. It's going to be the body block there for Bear. And meanwhile, Ron, he's gone a little too deep. There's a heal to keep him alive. A kill is going down. It's over to Wara in the two versus two. Now Celebrity, he's trying to get in there. The auto attacks, but he's, he's still wave. on top of him. He needs to back away. The auto attacks, it's too close to call. He'll flash away and keep himself alive. At the 2v2, Wara with the kill. <laughs> Bear there, thinking that the Mystic Shot was off of cooldown, blows the flash, thinking that he's going to be chased away by a skill shot, manages to save his life, and Ice come up big in the bot side. 
Oh, that is so big for the team and their lineup and how the rest of this game is going to go. Set up for success despite being down in farm. Four now. We see Kletos into the Raptor Swarm. He's ready. He's waiting. He he's, wants a mid lane gank. Yeah, he's not there for the Raptors. He's, uh, he's definitely checking out that Victor. Hello. Hi. Found him with the, <laughs> the Prey Seeker. How's it going? Mid lane, Plugo. Going to be pressing out Optimus. Uh, Mancha Q as well. We'll just pressure him away. So everything has calmed down just a little, but never was expecting the 2v2 uh, <laughs> tussle in the bottom lane to actually resort in the kill. Okay, we finally have a moment. It's calm. Okay. We can talk about the fact that Levy got punished going for Skull Crab. Again, the thing that this guy does in his jungle pathing and is the high priority on Scuttle Crab. He doesn't buy wards, so he has to gain vision other ways, and he will change his jungle pathing to prioritize for that. So the fact that Kletos had a good read on him, met him in the river, and they also had the mid lane shove, beautiful play. This is your, your, your MO, and I'm gonna beat you to the punch. This is how I expected the jungle matchup to work out, though. I don't really see Levy as the smart player in this one. It's more over to Kletos. Levy's all about the mechanical outplays. Kletos, just kind of reading him like a book, is just how he imagined the matchup to go, and so far it has worked out that way. Again, it sounds harsh, but SOFM, uh, the other big jungler from the region, did say that Levy is very mechanically talented, he's a good jungler, but he's not very smart. Yeah. I mean, we're still complimenting him, we just have to counterbalance it, but his strengths are in a different place. And he's playing Lee Sin, he's playing to his strengths. It's Brawn versus Brain, which is so cool because on the other side, uh, Kletos really is. He's the best shot caller in the region. He's recognized not only on his own team, but also on uh, by the community as well as the enemy teams and his peers. The mic checks really revealed this. He is the shot caller for Team Ice. So it is a very real scenario of will the smart guy in glasses win or will the big tough, you know, football guy win. We'll have to see the mountain versus the viper in the jungle. We all know how that one turned out, but uh, Kletos back into the bottom side. Levy is going to take away this good old crap. Ron, I felt very good at hitting those bubbles, but decision making afterwards, maybe not so stellar with Celebrity. It's Again, like, I've hit it, guys. Let's go, let's go in. They are so polarizing of a bot lane. Celebrity and Ron OP are either going to go off or they're going to go very deep in a hole. They never dig sideways. It's either up or down. <laughs> Well, that's how it's gone so far. Presently down, so we need to try and scramble out of that hole in the near future. Uh, Plugo going up to the top side of mid lane. Unfortunate for Levy, who was Dana. looking for a gank. There's a, there's a poppy incoming, lads. Dana. OP to miss. Oh, We're going to need to see something. But Levy, he didn't recall in time, which means he is around for this counter gank. Kletos coming from the bottom side, but Optimus is low. He's down, and Levy also trying to back away to his tower. He's looking for a minion to safeguard, too. But with the assistance of the rest of the ICE members and QTV being too late to the party, that's a kill over to ICE. Yep, Hellier has the window there. Make sure that he executes on it. So brilliant mid lane gank. Uh, and if we had to kind of pick out a weak point on Team Fire, it is actually with QTV. He is a very popular streamer in the region. Uh, he's not known as necessarily the best top laner there. And we can see why this is already being exploited by the captain. Yeah, I mean, like, it makes a whole lot of sense when Helior is one of the star players of the ice lineup, one of the first players to uh, really get down there. But we'll see that mid lane gank once again. Levy attempted to assist, but Artemis way too much damage from Helior. And the fact that Karma is so tanky uh, that she's able to actually survive, like outmaneuver with her movement speed augmentation, but also survive the Chaos Storm. And this is really big because Plugo is a rookie coming into this tournament. Yeah, he has some international experience at the last uh, international wildcard, but this is pretty much his, his first season. Uh, that was his first time internationally. And as I say that, hold on. Into mid lane once again. I think Optimus is just going to be shoved out here. Kletos doesn't have the kill pressure, but he can just be an annoying fly on the wall who's constantly there just chipping away at his health bar. But constantly keeping Optimus down again. He's the star player of Southeast Asia against the rookie. So it's awesome for Plugo to come out on this stage and go toe to toe with someone who has the reputation of Optimus. What really excites me is uh, how Plugo has actually done really well with Kletos so far, or maybe the other way around. Because Kletos used to a different type of player in the mid lane, and is actually just making it work, even against Optimus and Levy. So, so far, actually coming out on top. We'll see if that continues through this game, as we are only eight minutes in. Feels longer for some reason. 2,000 gold advantage. so much uh, fighting. Even That's though true. it's only three to zero, it's, I feel like there's been like 10 little skirmishes, yeah. or at least attempted fights so far. That's true, which led to uh, the kills in the end. And 
Just a nice trade there from uh, from Wara. He's really got control of this lane. I mean, of course, there was no Nami there to assist Ezreal. But I think the bigger problem is the fact that it's tier versus BF sword, uh, as well as level six for Vayne. But mm. before we go into that. The jump, the kick, the knockback, as clean as you like. And Levy just turning up for Optimus, handing him a kill. Okay, so it took nine minutes, but Southeast Asia finally showed up to the game. That's what we expect from them. They're going to be a very mid-focused team, very mid-centric team, but meanwhile top. QTV, he tries to get away. He's going to use Claytos to get back to his tower, but the Q is not enough. He dives into the tower. Celebrity in the bottom lane. Warr has found him. And Ron trying to just float back to the tower, but he's got an angry vein on his backside. Beck comes in, and that's the double kill for the vein in the 2v2. This is becoming a major problem. And the reason why Wara and Bear had the confidence to do that is because they saw that everyone was on the top side of the map, that they could go aggressive, they could go all in. Even worse, the fact that Ron OP still only level five on the Nami didn't have the disengagement from the tidal wave. Six and one currently. And the last uh, minute or so really just opened up the game. But let's see what opens up and happens in the bottom lane. I'm pretty sure that they're just about to get run down, yeah. Okay, so we're actually gonna take a time and we're going to talk about how Vayne and John will work out okay. and why I'm super excited to see this two pair return. Because for the longest time, uh, these two reigned supreme. And then they kind of disappeared, you know, as long range uh, 80 carries or utility 80 carries moved into the scene. Jana has uh, movement speed on her passive, which works really well with Vayne's passive ability to chase people down. Final Hour also gives Vayne about a free BF sword worth of stats or bonus attack damage. And then again, you apply a Janna shield, and at level 9, it's another free BF sword. And the thing about Vayne is she likes to itemize into attack speed in particular, so it's all of these accumulative stats moving in the same direction. This pair is very deadly. Synergy across the board, and currently, Wara is just kind of Stacking, uh, stacking AD right now. He went for the early Berserk Griefs to uh, help with that attack He's speed. Gonna go He's gonna go into massive. the Infinity Edge and do double seal item. Okay. Will he uh, actually go for like a recurve first or like anything from like the, the Hurricane or will he just go for the Infinity Edge trail? Can uh, touch that point in a, in a second as Levy is getting battered right now by Kletos as he walks into that jungle. Brain seems to be both Brain and Brawn currently in that matchup. I mean, he wants to fight the Rek'Sai. The problem is, is that his mid lane's still in a fragile situation as well as his bot lane. So it is really risky. As I say that now, meanwhile, in the top lane, we have proxy farming happening. The life of a Maokai. Yeah, the life of a Maokai. <laughs> but this, the thing is, Levy cannot bad. afford to go aggressive and invade Kletos anywhere on the map. All three of his lanes are either neutral or losing right now. But the good thing in the top lane for QTV, at least, is he's holding uh, pretty well on farm. Here comes the teleport, but here comes the dive. It's the bottom lane that we really need to look at because Celebrity and Ron OP not in a great position. Kletos is coming in and so is Poppy I'm from the top side. At least someone's going to die here and I think it's going to be the Nami. Kletos is the one to collect that one for the ice lineup. And this is yet another kill for the blue team. But Latin America South fans must be going nuts right now. Kletos and Heli are leading the charge on that dive. The ward was placed, the teleport comes in. He's like, it's fine. You go this direction, I'm going to go this direction. Hit him with the blitz. Perfect. Perfectly executed. Just like the mid lane from Levy and Optimus, that's the only play they've made and really got themselves on the board. And we just haven't seen anything else happen while the bot lane is bleeding out. Celebrity not in a good place. Ron OP, they just cannot contest that lane. And there's nothing that Levy can do because he's not even winning the jungle matchup. So that all of that will culminate and allow Kletos and the rest of his team to pick up this first dragon. Yep, it's the one-two punch, like you said, the first tower into the first dragon, and it's just so much control uh, right now for Team Ice. It's now a question of where do they strike next, and it's already being shown. The fact that they're sending War or Wara and Bear towards that top lane, and they're going to continue to try to siege down towers. The other cool thing about the Vayne Janna combo is the fact that Janna helps compensate for the one thing that Vayne's really poor at, and that's sieging towers. She's a very short range AD carry. You know, it's super unsafe for her to approach a tower, especially against the likes of Lee Sin as well as Victor, and start pushing that down. Janna gives her the safety with the disengagement in the mon soon, as well as helps her siege down these structures again with that shield at level 9. Levy is heading into the top lane, connects the Q onto Bear, but Bear... She still has her Monsoon. He's good to go. Here comes Ron, trying to open this up for his team. Wara, oh. just get locked up. There's the flash, another flash by QTV. Keep him in place, Kletos coming in. QTV can't quite get in range to finish him up, and look at the return damage. That is what Vayne will do to you when 4-0-1. Kletos looking to set up another team. 
Uh, another kill for his team, but another one for zero pick is all good. Good attempt right there. The fact that they threw the tidal wave from the river trying to hide it, make sure that they connect with their target. Unfortunately, it was on top of a control ward. So good attempt from Southeast Asia, but again, Wara, he wasn't the first choice, but certainly making some fans on the stage today. That's exactly what he wanted to do, really. And when you look at this lineup, so many people coming into this tournament as their like farewell and thanking their fans for putting them in here. But Bear in particular. They are turning up. This is Bear's like last hurrah. Yeah, so uh, Bear was actually asked out of retirement to come to the tournament for a goodbye to his fans. Speaking of goodbye, Kletos yeah. is like, this is mine, see ya. Mm -hmm. That one level advantage takes that smite away and Levy's quite upset that his lunch money was just taken from him. But it's uh, accumulating pressure towards the top side of the map because again, they've picked up their bottom lane, they're both in siege mode right now. Unfortunately for Celebrity, he's just between items, he's sitting on the variety bucket, if you will. Uh -huh. He's got his tier, he's got his sheen, there's a shield in there, now he's gonna die. Uh, Wara wants some of that variety mix. Oh yeah, delicious. In the bottom lane, QTV, he's on to Heliot. Oh, someone died. Victor is dead. Levy coming in, hit, finds Pluko. This 1v1 not going so hard for the Karma. That's the heal keeping him alive. Meanwhile, QTV will lock him up. They will sandwich him in and be happy to pick up at least another kill. They doubled their kills in that last trade. Uh, two for one here, but that leaves top lane completely exposed for Vayne. The flame is still burning for Team Fly, although... It's kind of a flicker right now, Frost. It's just it's real tiny. Yeah, <laughs> real tiny. Real tiny. Meanwhile, while all of that's happening, good chip damage as well as a uh, wave reset up in the top lane for Team I. So still in full control of this map as well as the game. There's the static shift. So I got the answer to my question. He will go for the uh, attack speed item first and then finish off his IE afterwards. Because he's got the Janna. Mm -hmm. Now sitting at level eight. One more, as we're now going to look at this tower dive. So uh, Celebrity gets wrecked. <laughs> that was uh, but the big thing for me is the fact that Kalados is back behind him, zoning off the other members, so isolating that Ezreal. Yeah. And again, we said that Southeast Asia going into this tournament, I gave them the edge because they did have more experience collectively as a unit playing. They've already gone through a tournament with this roster, but it's actually Latin America South proving me wrong, stepping mm -hmm. up and being cohesive as a unit across the board. I love to see it. Um, 16 minutes in, Herald will now be on the board for Ice to try and pick up. Levy. There's nothing in his jungle for him. <laughs> it's like Krugs? No, no, Krugs not here. Raptors? Raptors? Can I take Raptors? That'd be great. Oh, yeah, Raptors are here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nice. Uh, that would be a, a bit of gold in the bank, but he's so far down compared to Kratos right now. Rift Hell goes over, and he's going to hear that. Levi, Levi just not having a great game. Uh, cool thing, though, is the fact that they did give the Glimpse of the Void buff to the Rek'Sai, something mm. that I really love about Rek'Sai and why, again, it's so cool that Kletos gets this champion in particular, uh, is that the Glimpse of the Void is going to help empower her in side lanes so she can be that split-pushing factor, although, as I say that, TP coming in. QTV trying to make something happen. Levy coming in. There's the tidal wave. Artemis coming in there as well. Everyone has joined the party. Wara gets locked up. This could be Levy's chance to get in there. He jumps in, but there is too much peel from Janna. Wara picks up the kill onto Levy. So, Celebrity not quite there with Here the finish the off of the ultimate. The re-engage from Ice, as you put it there, Frost, is well in form. Heliot trying to get in a rage. Lands on Tehran. Hits him with the hammer shark. He goes down for another kill. And this is an absolute whitewash. There is nothing that Fire can do. That team fight was so well executed, and it's not done yet. The static shift rocked so That close. was scary, real scary. Artemis, he doesn't even have the payload to deliver here. The ultimate is down. He can't get in there and make a hero play. And it is bad news bears for Fire. And now they've created such a, uh, a huge opening of power in the top side of the map that they're going to get further and further behind that mid tower. But let's take a look at this. Watch Kletos. This guy is a hero. So effectively, Ice need to weather the chaos storm. Once they do that, uh, it's easy to just re-engage and chase them down with the vein. Kletos is going to go over the wall and he's going to hit a multi-man knockback. And why that's important is because Wara was caught in the gravity field. That vein was a sitting duck and Rek'Sai nailed multiple people to save her. They survived the chaos storm. Here comes the re-engage. But this is what happens when you put the eggs in the Wara basket. He's playing Vayne. You've got the rest of the team to support him. 
everyone here is built to protect him in some way. And that's exactly what you saw there. You've got this massive vein, 6-0-1, in the back lines, gets caught out, should be the death of an ADC in pretty much any situation, but when you have four people there to back him up, it doesn't happen. Yeah, and it's so risky to kind of build a composition around one member on an all-star roster. Sure. Again, these aren't their normal teammates. A lot of these players do have history playing with each other. There's only six teams in the Latin America South region. So a much smaller kind of table to go around to cross career paths. Mm. But still, confidence, communication, execution, all beautiful from last. Making it work. The rookie ADC making it happen. Okay, this is what I was talking about. All right, the split push. <laughs> yeah, glimpse of the void on the wreck side. If she sets up her neural network of void tunnels, mm -hmm. uh, she can. It's effectively a free teleport. So, this is a double TP composition. You give her a glimpse of the void, she becomes that split push presence. And it's so important that it's Kletos because he's the smart jungler. He's considered the. Uh, the macro heavy jungler mm -hmm. and his ability to identify where to be has made him stand out in his region. Poke happening in the side. They catch out Helio, but he is just too damn tanky for Fire to deal with. But this is the true test. Can they break the mid tier tower, especially when Victor's alive? Well, hello, Zone from Poppy. Pulls the trigger a little early. Tower will be going down. This is an outer tower, so Fire don't want to commit too heavily to this right now at 20 minutes. And just so smart, the fact that they didn't even approach mid or waste any of their time there until they had accumulated close to a 10k gold lead by exploiting the side lanes. So most teams, you know, the bot tower goes down, they immediately try to go mid, and they just sit there for so long, they waste so much time because the mid laner just sits there and wave clear it. They made sure to dodge that victor. They held him down in the lane, and they were just trying to be anywhere he wasn't, taking free structures and snowballing until it didn't matter. I mean, it's so juicy, right? You go for that mid lane tower, you get so much control over the map and the jungle, and you're like, we have to go for this. But if you get tunneled on that, we see the, the Aram happen in mid lane, and that's like the worst thing that can possibly happen. We see it so often. But dodge that trap, as you correctly mentioned. And QTV. Oh no. He's trying his. Oh no. Run. Oh, run. Run. run for your life. Run, Forest. A celebrity. He's. He's safe for now, but he is kind of on 40% health. What? That was two auto attacks and a shiv proc? Yeah. A little bit disgusting. Is he safe? I don't think anywhere safe from Wara. Even Levi is running away from him. Oh, this is this is not good. Aww. Doesn't have his 3D maneuver gear with him to get away from Wara. He is so scary. Plugo tosses a Q off the wall. Even Karma's chunking Maokai but at 21 minutes. Here comes this double TP play I was talking about. So what we're going to see is Kletos has taken full control over the bottom side of the jungle. He's now grabbed the creep wave, and he's going to shove that pressure point into the bottom side. You look across towards the Baron pit, there's where his neural network is set up. He's got a glimpse of the void. He's incredibly tanky. 2-0-3, oh, very far ahead. And he's just waiting for multiple resources of Team Fire to come down and join him before he zips up to the top side, and they pull the trigger on Baron. There's the Q, the Acre Prison. Doesn't lock up anybody. Levi es uh, escapes for now. There's the Blast Cone, so that gives them a nice out if they get pushed further into their jungle. This is great lane assignment from C. They send down Ezreal. He'll be able to clear that creep, uh, creep wave, especially with the AoE help from his Iceborne Gauntlet. And they leave the uh, Optimus where he is. He needs to be near that Baron Pit because Victor is their saving grace right now. 12 and 2. Double Mountain Dragon as well. That is possibly the, the worst thing that could happen to Fire. Levy, he's, he's just trying to find a way into his own jungle. That's all he wants right now. He's going to clear away this ward, I think. Still have to respect Levy, though. He is on the Lee Sin. He has the execute damage. You can't keep his vision out 100% because he can yeah. connect with Sonic Wave. Although they're starting it. Oh, okay. It's dying pretty quickly. I mean, you have a vein. Zero vision for Team Fire here. Poppy's on the backside. She's looking to disengage. And he, oh, here's the Lee Sin. Beautifully done. That was absolutely perfect. Could not have gone better. Ron gets oh. shot. The flash, the style points. All on purpose. Lugo, all on purpose. Now Celebrity needs to get out of dodge. He's good for now, but... Losing the jungler there to the verdict and then losing Ron as well to Plugo styling on him. Kletos around the back. He's going to threaten them to back off the turret. And that's going to allow a very easy push onto the mid lane. Inner turret going to be turned into rubble. And Team Ice will look for a rotation to another lane. But with six towers down, only the inhibitor line to break. And Kletos already has the prepared creep wave. 
Oh, hello. Oh, oh. Helios turning up, slams Optimus against the wall. That will be the engage for this one. Levi also punted up there. He will pay for it for his life. And this is not going as well as I originally thought it was. And neither is Ice, so they will have to back away for now. They may look for a recall and another attempt on that push, but that was balls to the wall aggression from Poppy. I'm gonna call it auspicious. Okay, all right. Uh, yeah, so, hmm, flashes over the wall, catches a beautiful stun. Unfortunately, they're not able to burst and instantly kill Victor, but we'll see a finer, better moment from Hellier. <laughs> and it was this disengage to make sure that there wasn't going to be any contestion for the Baron. It's fine. The two plays even itself out from Helio, it's fine. The flash from Plugo. He meant it. It got him enough space. He got the kill. He didn't yeah. need to go over the wall. Exactly. And he stayed with his team as well. So I'm going to say it was uh, Exactly. Intentional. Less space to get together with them. Of course. But All right. Frost, if you were on Team Fire and you were in this situation, what would you be doing with your life? Because this isn't a best of series. This is a best of one. And you are very far behind. Enemy team has Baron. And there is a 11,000 gold lead. There is a Vayne who will gib your tanks. What do you do? Uh, you clear out your jungle. You uh, clear the vision out of it as well as all of the camps. You take all of the safe gold on the map and you make sure that you can at least walk down certain lanes to about a fourth or a quarter of the extent. And you just continuously feed farm into Victor and Ezreal. You need to make sure that your two carries are never in the same lane and splitting gold. Because um, if Ezreal and Victor are standing next to each other, you're just, you're putting one of them down. It's getting diluted. Yes. You don't want to water that one down. And at this point, if things become precarious, if things look like they're going to be a dangerous dive, you give away an inhibitor. You can survive a single inhibitor going down, but if you die in a 5v5 trying to save that inhibitor, the game ends right there. So it's the risk versus reward. Yeah. Finding the right opportunity to come back in if they can. Oh, that was one auto. That was three autos. You give away and that. Nami inhibitor. is dead, and that happens. Yeah, I, I believe the time is to back away. Oh, oh that is actually disgusting. Double kill for Wara. He is going off. He is now legendary. 8-0-1. Three shots, the ADC, and the support. Oh my god. This turned into an R-rated broadcast real fast. Oh my god. He just he exploded into shrapnel. Alright, give it up, guys. Do not do not try and defend this in here. And maybe you get out of this one alive, but there's a big minion wave. No, Ice is going to play it safe, rotate to another lane, and Levy doing the right thing. He's going to try and clear out the minion wave, abduct the minion wave, and try and stall. Um, and did manage to take away most of those minions, but there is one left remaining. Baron buff did thankfully fall off. Oh, the oh. TP. Not like this, man. QTV. He's going to try and get into the front lines, but Kletos has a massive oh, shield. Levy. Levy knocks him into the base. Wara, he's in enemy territory. How big can he go? Being chased down by QTV and Celebrity. He gets the lockdown. The points and click. You cannot escape from Maokai. That's a one for one trade. They took down the raid boss. A Levy may have actually just saved them from another push. Huge hero play. Goes in for the end stack, trades his life for it, but like you said, does take down the raid boss, but more importantly, stops the push. Now this is bad news, Bez. Celebrity, he gets the kill. And two for one. I'll take the deal any day of the week. So we talked about what Southeast Asia needed to do. Well, as I say that. that, though, we have the replay. We're going to see that disgusting Ezreal damage. So Nami's going to be your first victim here. Oh, hello. Two. Three. Oh my god. And now it's going to be Celebrity oh, next. Hey, hey, Celebrity, how's it going? 500 damage crit. Have that one. Oh. oh. Flashes and dodges both. Yep. Beautiful play from this Vayne. And this is what happens when your Vayne is very capable of playing the champion. But, uh, all right, let's watch Wait, this play from With Levy. a beautiful double kill, has to be immediately answered by another beautiful play. Levy's gonna come from the left side Levy's of the teleport. bottom corner. That bubble on the teleport miss was unfortunate. Tumbles and already dodges the tidal wave, then straight into Death's arms. Meanwhile, Optimus is just destroying the rest of the team and keeping them zoned off long enough that the vein finally falls down. Really great from Levy there as well. Places down the first one. No, not the right angle. Places down another one. I will find you and I will kill you. Plugo takes a bit of damage over the wall there from Victor. Blast plants away. See you later. 
And Bear will go ahead and clear away some of these wards. Wara, of course, being a little anxious, does not want to be get, get caught out by uh, the Machine's Herald. Okay, so those hero plays, what they did is they bought Southeast Asia another foot into this game. It means that both teams are looking at the Baron. Now, the advantage for Team Ice is that they have the super minion wave in the bottom side. This is pretty easy. This is the uh, Baron in They're going to play with the split push pressure across the map. But again, Levy can also just steal the Baron. Just, just steal the Baron. That's just all you do need it. to do. <laughs> I mean, he did take down the Raid Wild pretty much by himself, so he has the potential. And that was, I would say, a smart play and well executed. So he is showing his prowess uh, later into this game, but being 16 it's kills just, down, so much gold here. It's the, the higher level macro decisions. You know, the ability in the confidence that Kletos has shown on the map, you know, the fact that he's leading the charge, that he's prepping the creep wave, that you see the ping go down and the Rek'Sai is already moving up. They're like, come on, guys, follow me. We're going top now. We're taking this tower. Okay, back up. We're going back towards the Baron. Set the ward versus Levy, who's like, reaction, that split-second decision, how do I make the best miracle play possible? So they're both impressive, but in very different ways. And it may be a case of the bigger they are, the harder they fall if the kills weren't all on uh, Wara, but unfortunately, Helior has some in the top lane. Claytoss is pretty big himself. Kluger is also a threat later into the game. Uh, Wet Noodle fight in the bottom lane, so it's going to be an uphill struggle even if they do find the perfect fight onto Ice, which is the real big problem here. And the Baron has spawned. Control Ward already down for Ice, really punishing for Fire, despite managing to get that one down themselves. So. Levi, again, going to have to pull that hero play, and he's around the area to try and do it. They've got three control wards in the area. I mean, this is going to be, like, if he steals the Baron, it's like a highlight real play that will last for his entire career, because he has to dodge a Poppy ultimate, he has to dodge a Monsoon knocking him over the wall, as well as all the damage from Wara. He's trying. Can His he get team. into the pit? He's trying to get in range, but immediately stopping the Baron. Ice with the heads up play. Redemption coming down. Great kick. Will be the disengage that Fire need. But Helior, he gets the flash. He gets the knockback. And this time, it's going to work out for him. Kletos coming in there as well. Shrugging off the damage from the laser. Blast Plant will help Fire get back to safety. No kills here, but that has put Ice in a perfect opportunity to try and re-go for that Baron. Helior does have teleport and is standing on the back side of the pit. He's looking for Lee Sin. He doesn't want, he doesn't care about anyone but Lee Sin. Baron's down and now the turn and burn. Levy over the wall, over the celebrity QTV being the blocker that his team needs right now. But Wara, he's going off. He's found Nami. He found Optimus. He <laughs> heals to try and get in range. And that'll be returned with the flash from Optimus. It's the 1v3. I know you want to go for it. I want you to go for it. But Wara, he plays it smart. He backs away with his team. You can tell good teams from great teams by their Baron setup. It was kind of what we saw start at World and was the yep. defining difference between who would move on from the quarterfinals and who didn't. The Baron setup from Latin America South was actually very sophisticated and very well executed. The uh, cohesive decision across all the members, stop the Baron right now. We're not going to risk a 50-50 steal. Get this Lee Sin out of here. Chips away at their health, gets Poppy in position. Very impressed with this All-Star squad. Very impressed. Yet another dragon <laughs> to add to their bounty. They have a ridiculous utility belt. Four dragons. Baron, Wara, <laughs> like, they're in such a good place. But Fire, they're hanging on, like, props to them. They've had an uphill struggle, and they are still making plays, still pushing out of the base, trying to get a steal, trying to get a setup. Like, the, the fact that Helior sees all of these people, and he doesn't care. Any other Poppy player, he's like, I see all of them, I gotta go in, I gotta push the team away, I have to save my team. He's like, no, what is my responsibility? What is my goal? What is their only option? Lee Sin. He was like really the Terminator. <laughs> he absolutely was like the Terminator. Um, and he will be back into the top lane where he has uh, found a nice menu wave. Uh, five threats to uh, meet him and guide himself <laughs> to the I've tower. I think I've seen this play before. Uh, well, Wara just goes in and kills everyone. Speaking of being the Terminator, Levy's trying to find Wara, just kind of hanging out. Yeah, it's like a, a dangerous version of Where's Wally? Because uh, if you find him, he might actually kill you. And he is killing the inhibitor. Goodbye, inhibitor. Top lane also being pushed in. Optimus is being sent up there, but uh, even he can't stop the puppy. Actually, his combo did negative damage. 
mid lane. Team Ice gonna pick up this one. It's all falling down. The House of Cards is collapsing. Celebrity, oh, what was that from Blugo? He's gonna have to take a step back. Kletos, he's in range. He doesn't have the flash. The zone away from Helior. He's gonna hold it for a second. But with all inhibitors down, Team Ice, they can play it safe. They can play it cool, calculated, as the namesake. Oh, I think that fits for their playstyle. Again, Kletos, the shot caller. This is his MO. They take all three inhibitors, pretty much smother Team Fire, and then back, reset, spend all of their global gold, probably hit up Elder and look for the kill. Now, we're putting a monopoly on all of the bad puns for these two teams. You heard it here first. Paulson Froskuren, ready to go. Levi, don't know if that was most efficient use of the blast cone, but uh, it will be fun. Can we be the zipper cast? What now? The zipper cast. The zipper cast. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get there. One day we'll be allowed to wear our, uh, our clothes. But uh, it is not this day. This day, Celebrity's trying to clear out a mini wave and isn't really able to do it because he's Ezreal and he's very far behind. This day is the Spartan stand. Yeah. This, this is, is a rainy day that you save up for, but there's not a lot in the piggy bank, so Fire not in good shape. I mean, backs against the wall, they need to find Wara, uh, which means it's all eyes on QTV. He needs to find the hard CC and set up Optimus to lay down the Chaos Storm across Vayne. Again, the Poppy Copter. Celebrity gets chunked. He's going to be backing away. Tower getting pushed in, and this is the last chance saloon for Team Fire. QTV melted out there by Wara, and Ron OP, what can he do but just scuttle back to the fountain? At this point, protect the KDAs. There's not much to protect, honestly. Another kill, another one, another one, and Ron OP back to the tower. Celebrity, he's going to survive for a little bit longer, but that's going to be the game. The Nexus falls, and Latin South America take it on home. And you can see it. Look at their faces. Huge smile. Miles, such a clean, clinical, precision played game from Latin America South.